Okay, I'm back. I just saw a question in the live chat that's going on right now saying, what's a memory leak? Guess what? You're going to find out what a memory leak is in this video. In particular, how to manage memory if you're using TensorFlow.js. Now, here's the thing. I live in a world where I generally program either in processing, which is built on top of Java, or I program in Java in P5, with the P5 library in the language JavaScript. Um, and I don't have to worry about memory management. I mean, I mean, often do, but most of the time I don't. There's something, my friend, my friend live, lives in the computer. Their, their name is Garbage Collector. And the Garbage Collector just kind of is always there, checking to see if I'm using any of my variables anymore. And if I'm not, collects that memory and reallocates it for somebody else. A memory leak is something in your program which continues to allocate memory over and over again and yet where, where you, don't need to, you don't need to remember that stuff. And so you're filling up the computer's memory and it's just to infinity and eventually the memory will be full and your program will crash, your computer will crash. I mean, maybe it's not a leak technically if you, keep, if you, if you need to save all that stuff, but most of the time, like if you're creating a variable that's just um, keeping track of the computer's, the, a score in a game, and you're reallocating new memory for that score over and over and over again, uh, and you don't need the old score, you should deallocate that memory. And if you're programming in like a low level language like C or C++, you sometimes have to manage this memory yourself. Higher level languages that are more that have a layer of abstraction, the browser is there to protect us, I think, uh, the Java virtual machine, they have a garbage collector that handles some of this memory management. TensorFlow.js is in this sort of funny in-between place. I mean, we're programming in JavaScript, but TensorFlow.js is doing some highly manual management of the memory of your GPU to do all this fast math operation. So we have to make sure we carefully think about how we're allocating memory and explicitly deallocate memory. So that's what I want to look at. So let's take a look. We're going to do, this is going to be exciting. We're going to make a memory leak happen and then we're going to fix it. Yay. <laughs> All right, so, uh, well, so this is the code that I had before. Um, let's actually keep this. This is kind of interesting. Um, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna take all of this code and I'm going to put it in draw. What's draw, you might ask? So again, there's no reason for me, there's no particular reason why I need to be using P5, the P5 library with TensorFlow.js right now. But one of the things the P5 library has, it has this animation loop. If you write the function draw, it's going to execute that function 30 times per second, 60 frames per second, depending on the situation. So I just want to hit save, and now I'm just going to hit refresh. So in theory, this is chugging along right now. So the question is, how do I look at how much, I mean, there's, I don't see anything. Like I could, like maybe what I want to do is do like console.log hello, just to make sure it's like running. And we can see there's, I'm seeing hello over and over again, over here, over and over again in the console. So it looks like it's, the program's running fine, it's running fast, no problem. Let's look and see what memory it's actually using. So there's a lot of tools up here, oops, no, here, that I don't really know how to use uh, for evaluating uh, uh, the performance of your web page uh, in the developer tools. I'm gonna go in, up here under window and go to task manager. One of the nice things about, ta oh my goodness, we definitely have a memory leak already. <laughs> I think, and I think I filled it up. <laughs> I think probably the GP, so the memory footprint, so I, let me scroll this over here. So we can see these are the various things the browser is, this is the browser as a whole. So this is the regular computer's memory, the TensorFlow documentation tabs using 94 megabytes, but the GPU, which uh, is just filled its way up to two gigabytes really fast. Let's try, um, let's try setting the frame rate to, uh, to one and refresh the page. And let me go back to the task manager. And maybe now we can see, oh, Wow, it's already at two gigabytes? Okay, so I, something was going on with the browser. <laughs> um, probably I had filled up the memory somewhere else. So I just actually quit Chrome and restarted it. Um, so now you can see the GPU is using 32.8 megabytes of memory, which isn't that much. And maybe over time it's gonna like go up because I'm making, oh, oh, actually, no, it's not. Because I also, in testing things, I commented out, sorry, I commented out all the tensor stuff. So let me put the tensor stuff back in, right? And now let's take a look at the GPU memory. 
So I'm going to close the task manager. I'm going to hit refresh. Now I'm going to go to the task manager again and I'm going to look here. That's the, I'm going to look here at this number. So we can see I'm using some memory. Maybe it's going to go up, maybe not. But the thing is, I've got very, I'm, I'm using like a very small amount of numbers. So really what TensorFlow.js is designed to work with, the reason why, is to work with large amounts of numbers. So let me go back to my code and let me just say, what if instead of having 15 numbers, I'm going to have 15,000, which would be 500 by 300. So I'm going to have a five, two 500 by 300 matrices, transpose one of them, and do matrix multiplication. So let's do that. Let me now, let me hit refresh one more time. This is very hard to demonstrate. Oops. Oh, uh, not, not 150,000, 15,000. Whoops. Oh, that should actually be 150,000. Let's do that. 150,000, that's what I meant. Let me hit refresh. Let me go back to the task manager. And now let's look at that memory. It's going up. Little by little, it's going up. Now, let's say I was trying to do that. 30 frames per second. Let's get rid of this frame rate one. Hit save, close the task manager. The task manager I feel like needs to be, and now I'm gonna go back and open up the task manager. This is my, my last time demonstrating this. And now I really wanna see this memory leak. I wanna see this number go up. 63, 66. Okay, so I, I let this run for a little bit. We can really see the memory leak is happen, happening. You know, this is only gonna go up. It's never gonna go down. So one of the things, now there's, I, you know, I'm using the task manager. The truth of the matter is, um, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna type in here no loop just to shut this off for a second. Um, the truth of the matter is tensorflow.js provides us with a mechanism to check this as well. So I can also say tf.memory. Let's actually go to the API. Uh, API reference, memory, uh, tf memory. And I can look at um, the number of bytes allocated, the number of tensors, this type kind of thing. So let's actually look at, let's, let's look at number of tensors. Um, so I can say, I think TF memory dot num tensors. I can do, oops, uh, maybe it's just, is it a function or is it a property? Let's try this, console log this. Um, oh, let me get rid of the hello. So you can see here, these are all the tensors being stored and they're going up and up and up. The good news is there is a way to get rid of tensors that you don't need anymore. There are two functions, well, there's probably, there might be more than this, but there's two functions that I wanna talk about as they relate to memory management. There is the function called dispose and there's the function called tidy. And they're, they're kind of, they're, they do the same thing. They clean up memory that's not used, but they do it in a different way. So let's look at how that works. So coming back over here, if I go into my code and I say, like these are all my tensors, A, B, 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 and C. I'm gonna call this B underscore T, because that's actually like, sometimes an, I feel like a naming convention, like transposed B, at least it's my own naming convention. And I'm gonna say A dot dispose, B dot dispose, C dot dispose, and B underscore T dot dispose. So this is me manually Dispose after, uh, you know, this is like do something meaningful here. Like I want to do something meaningful with these tensors and then I'm done with them. I want to dispose them. So now let's run this again. I'm going to hit refresh. And look, zero, 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 zero. There are no tensors stored in memory. And in fact, if I go to the task manager, we should see load up please, that the GPU process is not growing. It's at 229 megabytes and it's not getting any higher. There is no longer a memory leak. We have correct fixed the memory leak. The thing is, so, so that's good, that's step one. We've talked about dispose. The thing is, you might be writing a program using TensorFlow.js where you're just making tensors like crazy. You're just tensor happy. And so really having to manually keep track of everything and call dispose on everything can become rather unwieldy. And that's where tftidy comes in. So tftidy is a function 
that you don't call on a particular tensor, but it allows you to wrap a bunch of code in that will get cleaned up when it ends. And what I mean by that is I can say tf tidy my stuff, and then I can write a function called my stuff where I do all of this. So what this is doing is it's saying execute this function my stuff, but make sure you tidy it up after you're done. So let me run this and see what happens. And you can see I still have zeros. Um, and just to be sure that this function is running, and now we can see that function is running. Here's the thing, you're not going to see anywhere in any TensorFlow.js examples it written this way. So you notice here, I'm just going to do a couple quick steps here. I wrote a named function and passed it into tftidy. I could, more likely you're going to see an anonymous function that doesn't have a name, passed into TF tidy like this, and even more likely than that, you're going to see that arrow syntax. So I encourage you to check my uh, video on arrow syntax, but this is what you're typically going to see. This is, ah, inside of the draw loop, every time I want to do some stuff, some meaningful stuff with my tensors, but whatever I do, I want that to be cleaned up. All right, let's test this one last time. We've got TF tidy. I'm going to hit refresh. And once again, zero tensors. Let's put one constant test equals TF. Oh, no. Oh, look at this. This should be tensors 2D, by the way. I'm surprised it didn't pick up. It didn't give me an error there. Oh, I think that's the same error that I filed a bug report at, um, and that's been fixed, maybe. And maybe I'm not using the most recent version of TensorFlow.js. Is there a 0.11? No, but when there is one, that will be fixed. <laughs> uh, just ignore me. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, TF tensor 2D values shape. And I'm going to run this. Uh, oops, to lowercase d. And now we can see, ah, I'm creating all these tensors. I have a memory leak. These are getting cleaned up, but I could, you know, manually dispose of this one, I, everything's been cleaned up, or last piece, this one could go inside of tidy, and then there we go. All right, um, and by the way, I'm, uh, the chat is reminding me that there is a function called tfkeep, so I probably, if inside of tf tidy, I could use tfkeep if I have all this stuff happening, but I want to make sure to keep this one. So this can get very complex very fast, and I'm really trying to just give you a cursory overview here, and hopefully as I start to build some examples where I'm trying to do stuff with TensorFlow.js, it'll make a bit more sense as we're using this stuff in the wild. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in another, oh, what's next on my list? Um, oh, the Layers API. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the Layers API next.